Hey, Ohio Realtors, register now for the 2022 convention. We're back in Cleveland from September 18th through the 21st for this year's jam-packed event. Featuring 20 and a half hours of CE, nationally known speakers, awards receptions, networking, and the always popular RPAC YPN event hosted at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Don't miss out. Register now by visiting ohiorealtors.org forward slash convention. Welcome to the Real View podcast, where Ohio realtors connect you to innovators and influencers, keeping you with the real view of real estate. Whether you're a broker, agent, first time home buyer, industry leader, or just happen to stumble upon our podcast today, you can expect to hear tips, tools, tricks, interesting information, and so much more from the experts in Ohio's real estate game. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Real View Podcast. I'm your host, Allison Wiley. Joining me today is Ashley Harwood. She is an author, speaker, coach. She is a real a fellow realtor and the founder of Move Over Extroverts, her own company that she founded back in 2018. She's awesome. We're re- I'm really excited to have her on today. We're going to dive into the world of introverts. And if that seems like a foreign world in our real estate world, maybe it is. Um, But we are going to tell you why there is no hope lost if you are an introvert in our real estate world. So Ashley, welcome onto the show. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, we're super excited to hear your experience and your expertise in the industry and kind of a little bit more about your business and what you do. But before we get started with that, I have to ask our signature question, which we ask all of the guests who join us on the show, which is since the show is called The Real View, I would like to know what is the best view that you've ever seen? So I thought about it for about a minute here since we talked about it earlier. And I think the best view in my life right now is I'm looking at the corner of my desk, and I wish you guys could see this. I have some beautiful flowers on the corner of my desk. They are white peonies, light pink roses, and eucalyptus leaves. And the reason this is the best view for me right now is it just, I went to Trader Joe's and I bought them for myself. And it reminds me that I'm in control of my own happiness and I can do things to bring myself joy, even in the midst of a very tumultuous world. I love that. Oh, that's so beautiful. And so I think there's something really special when you can appreciate just the small things in life, like buying yourself a beautiful bouquet of flowers and having them sit on your desk. I think that that is super special. What a beautiful perspective you have on that. And thanks so much for sharing. My pleasure. And buy yourself the own your own flowers, right? Nothing wrong with that. That's right. <laughs> I actually had knew somebody that um, would send themselves flowers like to their office. And I'm like, that's actually kind of a cool idea, right? That it's like a little cool. surprise. I'm, I have a wonderful man in my life who also buys me flowers. And I buy them for myself too. So it's awesome. You know, Best of both worlds. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I want to hear a little bit about you, Ashley, about your career journey. Um, I know you've been in the real estate game for a while now, um, kind of what your career path has looked like and then kind of how it's led up to where you are today. And if you want to talk a little bit about your business and founding that and kind of what that means to you, I'd love to hear about it. Okay. Awesome. Well, I got my license in 2013. And I should also tell you guys, I am from the Midwest as well. Oh, yay! Where? Born and raised outside Detroit, oh, Michigan. Oh, that's awesome. So you're like yeah. a neighbor, basically, right? <laughs> yes. And I always will love Ohio because you have Cedar Point, and I'm obsessed with Cedar Point. Yes. You got it. Have you been back to Cedar Point lately or been a while? Uh, it's been a couple of years, not since COVID, but I did drive out just to go to Cedar Point from Massachusetts a few years ago. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. I love that. (laughs) I love that part of our state, you know, just the amusement park and then the water. And I'm a big fan. We we do an annual trip to Putin Bay every year and it's it's a great part of the state. It kind of makes you feel like you're not even in Ohio, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like you're on an ocean. It's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, Very cool. Well, good. I love talking to a fellow Midwestern girl. So you get us and and you know, you know, our world for sure. (laughs) I do. I do. So that's going way back. That, that was my, my initial background, my childhood. And then I 
started in real estate in Massachusetts in 2013. I got my license. I jumped in with both feet, full-time agent, solo agent. And I took all the training courses that were offered and I started implementing and doing what I was trained to do, saying the scripts, calling the expired list. And I just did not see the results that other people were seeing or that I expected. So it was just, it was so much work and not any results. And so I I got really frustrated. I got down on myself. And at the same time, I was out networking and building my sphere because I didn't grow up here. So I had to go meet people, building my sphere and going to chamber of commerce events, BNI, all the things. And what I realized, it took me a good year and a half, maybe two years to realize that the cold calling piece was not working for me and to give myself permission to kind of let go of that and focus on meeting people and building a more referral based business. So I ended up building a pretty successful business for myself. It just took a lot longer than it kind of needed to because I was doing activities that were not aligned with who I was. They, they didn't come naturally at all to me and I was pretty terrible at them. But it had been so ingrained in me that you have to do these things. So the reason I started my company and I now work with agents as a coach is to help guide them to find other ways of doing business that they don't absolutely hate. You're right. We get so, you know, overwhelmed and ingrained in our brain of like, you need to do this and you do this and you do this. And then, you know, when it's not working for you, it would be easy to kind of just say, all right, I'm done. I can't do it. Like, this is not for me. But you kind of took that. And instead of giving up and, and, you know, letting that dream go, you just found different ways of doing the business that worked for you. And I think that's really cool. And it's kind of what we're going to talk a little bit about today. And what you're going to share is kind of what you've done and and ways that other agents can kind of get out of that training and what they've been told and, and, you know, what's been ingrained in their head and so long and really do something that works for you and that you're comfortable with that can make you in your business to succeed. What common misconceptions are there out there? about introverts in in real estate? Because you think of real estate and you think of anyone who's a seller and has to sell things and you think they just need to be out there and in your face. And when you watch any sort of reality TV, you know, about buying or selling homes, that's kind of like the personality that you see, right? But what misconceptions are there out there about being introverted in real estate? I think you just hit it right on the nose. It's that the misconception that you have to be super outgoing or you have to be salesy and pushy. And I just don't think that's true at all. I think the most successful, I know the most successful agents are the ones who are relationship based. And and even if they're not, they're not, they're not coming at it from a pushy salesy standpoint. They're coming at it from a consultant point of view. How can I help you? What do you need? Let me give you all the information. You decide what you want to do. I feel like a lot of my fellow introverts get discouraged and they question. I know I have in the past questioned whether I have the right personality to be in the business. And let me just assure you that yes, you do. Some, some, in fact, some of the top agents and the leaders in the industry are introverts. They just don't talk about it. Yeah. And why is that? Like, like there's a sort of like stigma or shame almost around it that like that doesn't need to be there. We're, we're working on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. There is, there is kind of a stigma. I was talking to one agent, a, a former client of mine who said she was working for a very small boutique brokerage and the broker owner actually told her if you're an introvert, you will not succeed in this business. And I was like, oh, heck no. Wow. That is terrible and so false. That is not true at all. Like, my God, that got me so riled up. That's the misconception that you cannot be, if you're self-aware enough to say I'm an introvert, there's this misconception that you will not be good in sales. And that's just not true. It's not true. And it just looks a little bit different, right? Just the way of doing things and the approach is is really the only thing that's changing here, right? It's not necessarily that, you know, you're never going to make it. And like you said, it's definitely not true that you can't succeed if you're an introvert. You just got to maybe go about things differently than maybe what's common or what's best practice out there. And you kind of go into some tools and tricks that you have as to how you can approach it differently based on what 
you know, you're initially taught as an agent and kind of going through training and things like that. What would you say is your number one different approach or or change that you implemented and that you help others implement to kind of help those introverts see more success? So this applies to agents who are already doing some business. This won't really apply to brand, brand new agents. I have different advice for them. But for more experienced agents, doing an audit of everything that you're doing for lead gen is really, really critical. And the audit has two parts. So make you first make a list of everything that you're doing to find business. And then you go through the list. This is part of one of the classes I teach in real estate offices. So I'll give you guys a little little preview. Yes. So the first pass through of the list is scale of one to 10. How well is this thing working? If you're cold calling, how well is it working? If it's working well, probably it should stay on the list. Then the second pass through is how much do I enjoy this? One through 10. If it's working well and you hate it, that might be something to leverage and have somebody else do. If it's not working and you hate it, cross it off the list. Just get rid of it entirely. And then you can go back and put more time and energy into the activities that are working and you enjoy them. That's really the key. And then for the new agents, my one piece of advice is to start with the people you already know, start with where you're already spending time. And if you're like me and you just moved to a new area and you don't know anyone, think about where you can meet people doing things you will have fun doing. Are you a CrossFit person? Are you a yoga person? Do you like to read books? Go find things that are fun that will get you in front of people. And the reason is it's not just, oh, life should always be fun because that's not realistic. The reason is the more you enjoy something, the more you will do it. And the more you do it, the more you'll have results. And it doesn't have to be painful. You know, when I think of of introverts, like you said, finding ways to make it enjoyable and, and capitalizing on things that you already like to do can just make it like so much more enjoyable for you and others that you're interacting with. Absolutely. And it's a great hack because if you're joining clubs and, and groups, you already have something in common with these people and that will build in a layer of trust. It's really, it's leveraging the time it will take to build the relationship because you already have a level of trust with them. And that's kind of what real estate really boils down to is the building relationships. You know, it's not having the best sales tactics and doing lead generation. It's building those relationships with people that even introverts can do, right? This isn't something that's just exclusive to extroverts. This episode of The Real View is brought to you by the Ohio Association of Community Colleges. Ohio's network of community colleges provides accessible training that accommodates the busy lifestyles of aspiring real estate professionals at half the price of a traditional university. With convenient locations in every part of the state, as well as online options, Ohio's community colleges are your smart choice for pre-licensing education. For more details or to start the journey to a real estate career, Visit the education page at ohiorealtors.org and then click on the pre-license course locations. Talk about some ways that we can really focus on building relationships and give maybe some strategies on best ways to do that. Yeah, so I truly believe that introverts are amazing at building relationships. That's one of our strengths. We, in general, one of the characteristics of introverts are that we like to go deeper with fewer people. And that might not result in as many sales in the first year. However, over time with consistent interaction, you know, keeping in touch with your people and keeping top of mind with them and providing value to them, that will result in a very solid referral business. And one of the things that you talk about is is the use of energy and kind of how important it is to preserve your energy and focus your energy into places that really deserve it and need it. And you almost word it in a way that you use it as a business tool. So tell us how you do that and how you can really harness the energy that you have so that it's making you and your business better. Yeah, I love talking about this because I there's another thing that the world doesn't talk about as much and, and we should. We always talk about money and time as resources. But there's a third resource and that's energy. And so with every decision that you make, where you're spending your time is important, where you spend your money is important. 
but it's also really important to think about where you're spending your energy. Where are you going to send your energy out to get the biggest return on it? You're right. It's they all kind of interact together and they're they're all part of, you know, what we need to be focusing kind of our everyday life around. And I think that it's so important, especially as as an introvert, to really focus your energy and spend a lot of thoughtfulness around where you're spending. What are some of the best ways kind of or advice that you have on ways that you can spend your energy wisely? I would recommend doing another audit. I love my audits. Mm -hmm. Go through your calendar for the past couple weeks and see, you can even just put a little plus mark or a little minus mark for every activity in your calendar. What's draining to you? And then what is replenishing to you? For introverts, we replenish our energy when we're alone. And that time is really precious and can be very difficult to carve out in the calendar. That's why, as you mentioned, they're all related. Time, energy, money, they're all related. But thinking about energy as its own deal is really important. And another good way to think about it is like your phone battery. When do you need to plug yourself into the wall and recharge? And get off the phone while it's charging too. Cause then you get right. frustrated. Like, why is this phone not charging fast enough? Right? Like that's, that's what I always say too. Like when I give myself time to recharge, really use that and truly like disconnect and like get off and stop everything you're doing so that you can truly get that full charge in the best amount of time. And then another thing that you talk about is creating your calendar and you, and you mentioned, you know, going through it and looking at your calendar and plusing and minusing things, but really creating a good calendar. That's not going to stress you out. What um, advice do you have on on making sure you have a calendar that's both productive, but also um, what you need in order to rest and recharge? As a blanket statement, I can say most agents need to get stuff off their calendar. They have too many things in there that are not critically important or do not provide a high enough return on the investment of time or energy or both. So Really see where you can cut things out and maybe cut more than you think. Mm. You can always add more, right? (laughs) You can always add more. I'm all for cutting back more than you think you need to. And then you can scale things up from there. But not all activities are the most productive. There's, I'm sure you guys have heard of the book, The One Thing. That's one of my favorite books, Gary Keller, Jay Papazan because it really helps you dial in on what are the most important things because there's not time or energy to do 45 things every single day. What are the most important ones that have to get done and have to get done by you? That's another piece. Where can you have help? You know, you don't need to build a huge team to have help. You can have an agent buddy cover for you. You can hire a transaction coordinator for $500 and they do all the paperwork, like get creative on where you can get some of your time back. That's so true. And I think that's something that as agents, you know, we're not necessarily the best at all the time is letting go and asking for help and knowing when it's okay to bring someone in. If you need somebody to do your paperwork, if you need somebody to write your contracts, you know, like just having that little bit of help is okay to ask for. And we just live in this world, I think, where you know, you feel like you have to do everything and that, you know, if you're not doing it, it's not getting done. And that's not necessarily the case. And like you mentioned, you know, just getting a person here and there to help out, you know, on those extra crazy days can just make the world of difference. It can make a huge difference. I saw this in my own business when I was transitioning from selling full time to coaching and teaching classes and running around New England, teaching all the classes I could, I did hire a transaction coordinator. Just as a solo agent, I said, it is no longer worth it for me to spend all this time doing my contract close paperwork. And it wasn't even as much the time as the mental energy that it took for me to stress out about every piece of paper and coordinating the attorney and the lender and the other agent, my client, everybody. Just the mental energy that that took, that was even a bigger piece than leveraging the time, if that makes sense. Anything that's going to make you feel better, I think, is important. And it's more than just, you know, offsetting time and scheduling and that and that kind of stuff. And going back to what you said, too, about thinking about what you're doing and and your schedule. And I, I someone told me this the other day and I'm like, that is so good. They said when someone asks you to do something, if you're first 
immediate jerk reaction isn't yes, then don't do it. And I was like, that is like so good because you get those texts sometimes, you know, and it's like, like you sigh and you're like, oh, I don't know. But yeah, I guess I'm available. Yeah, I guess I'm free. But like, you're not like, yeah, let's do it. Like, I never thought of it in that way before. But if that like, what do you think about that? Just like being cautious of what you say yes to and really making sure it's something that you're going to enjoy and that's going to fill you back up. Uh, yeah, I say that all the time. I, I won't swear on your podcast, but if, <laughs> if it's not a blank yes, yes, it's a no. And that's that okay. Is such an important litmus test. And I heard, and I mean, that's like life. I heard that. I'm like, wow, that's like life changing because there's so much, you know, that you get asked to do and you feel bad and you blah, blah, blah. Like we got to just stop doing that and that it's okay to just say, no, I can't today. Like, you know, I'm just, I can't do it. And I just, I just thought that was like super cool and maybe something, you know, that, <laughs> that you and others can relate to too. Absolutely. And you know what that is? That's self-care. Saying no to stuff. Yeah. Another thing that I think we all could be a little bit better at is, is that it's okay to say no. And if it's not a blank, yes, then um, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay to decline because that's self-care and a part of what you need to do to keep yourself strong. And another thing you kind of talk about too is lead generations. And you talked about kind of the struggle of that and cold calling and, you know, how to kind of uh, get around the ways that you're taught to do lead generation. But what have you kind of found or what have you guided your clients to do as far as lead generation and finding something that really works for them. So we come at it from a couple different angles. You know, we start with what are they currently doing? What's working? What's not? We start there and then we dive into, okay, what could they add? Where are they already spending time in their personal life? Where are they already interacting with people? A lot of times I see this play out where there's a huge opportunity to interact with agents, children's, friends, parents, right? So you're around all, people who have kids, all the other parents, there's a lot of opportunities interacting with them in just a casual way. Maybe you're all stuck at the sports game together for three hours and you don't want to be annoying agent person who everyone avoids, but you could put on like a little jacket that has your company logo on it or hat, or you could just make chit chat and ask them my favorite script what do you do for work? Mm. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you, they'll ask you, and then you can talk about real estate. Like it does not have to be this huge complicating thing. And that all, those conversations all count as lead gen. Absolutely. And it doesn't, if you hate cold callings and it's not working for you, you don't have to worry. There are other ways. What other bits of advice do you have for those agent introverted agents out there um, that may be listening on, you know, just what your experience has been in ways that they can, you know, feel better about being an introvert in an extroverted world. My advice is to really go inward. And this is fair warning. This is going to sound a little kind of woo woo up in the sky, but just bear with me. Go inward and ask yourself what you need and probably what it is is a vacation mm. and more days off and start there. Cut things out of your calendar, cut activities, cut obligations and stick with only what is really, really the most important. And sometimes getting that clarity requires you to like drive or fly somewhere else and just be in a different setting or just go stay the night in a hotel room somewhere locally. Being in a different setting, I don't know why, but it can provide a lot of clarity that you wouldn't already, you wouldn't otherwise have. And then you can make some decisions. And then the second piece of that is, which is easier said than done, is giving yourself permission to let go of some of those things. Yeah. Control by nature, people. We always kind of just want to do everything ourselves, but know that it's okay to let some things go and, and that it's okay um, to give up control of certain situations is really important too. So there is hope you're saying as an agent, an introverted agent who was taught these crazy things that you need to go out there and have this, you know, crazy personality. There is hope, right? Don't give up. And yeah, there is hope and you will be a better agent for your clients. You will resonate with different clients who need somebody who is more reserved and quiet and not in their face. There are buyers and sellers craving that. You're right. And, and because it is so, 
you know, oversaturated with these personalities. You know what I mean? That there are clients out there who, like you said, are looking for that and really relate more to that. And and that, and I love that you mentioned too on, on your website, you're like, there is nothing wrong with you. Like it is okay. And we shouldn't feel bad, you know, if we are more of the introverted style. Absolutely. And, and don't feel bad if you're an extrovert either. Just don't feel bad at all. Embrace who you are, play to your strengths and realize that there's enough business for everyone. And there are people out there who will work so well with you and they wouldn't work well with somebody else. And so the game is just finding those people. Yep. And that they are out there and that you can succeed in this industry, no matter who you are, as long as you're open and you work hard at it and you're committed to it. And I think that that's really refreshing. So Ashley, what a great message and what a great um, movement, you know, you've started. I think it's, it's super cool. You've really found a, a really cool, um, niche for yourself and for your business. And thank you for sharing, you know, your perspective with us and with the world. Tell our listeners how they can find you. Awesome. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you all for listening. Where you can find me, a couple places, my website, moveoverextroverts.com. And then I also run a Facebook group called Introverts in Real Estate, which is pretty cool. So um, I just started a YouTube channel and I just launched some merch. So t-shirts and mugs and stuff with introvert logos. <laughs> I love that. I just love that you embrace it and, and, and who you are and are working hard to empower others to, to feel the same. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're doing a great job. So once again, we appreciate you coming on and sharing your experience and advice for those other fellow introverts out there. Don't be afraid. Uh, don't give up. You can make this work for you. We know it's it can be hard sometimes, but Ashley gave some great insight into how you can make that work. So to all of our listeners, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Real View. That wraps up today's episode. You can keep up with the latest on the podcast at ohiorealtors.org slash The Real View and on Apple or Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Have questions, comments, or suggestions? We want to hear from you. Email us at podcast at ohiorealtors.org. We'll see you next time. Hey, Ohio Realtors. Register now for the fourth annual Broker Summit happening October 18th in Westerville, Ohio. Plus, make sure to join us for the all-new Team Summit happening the day before the Broker Summit. That's right, two straight days of learning and networking just for you. Don't miss out on this important opportunity. Register today by visiting ohiorealtors.org.